in comes the demon upper version and then they have another struggle now the the man is struggling with perversion the wife is struggling with perversion and that can be solved if someone was able to get past the barrier of the taboo topic and say let's discuss what's going on in your bedroom sex race issues mental health domestic violence these are issues that the church needs to discuss. We need to have a healthy dialogue about these topics. But too often, they're taboo in the church. We just don't talk about these things. They're uncomfortable. But that's the wrong approach. That is the wrong answer. I believe the church needs to lead the way on these issues. We don't want to send Christians, our brothers, our sisters, our spiritual sons and daughters into the world to get psychoanalyzed, to get medicated when it's uh, just a, a seasonal. It, no, no. We want to be prepared to address these issues in the church. Jesus is the answer, and he has the answer. The Holy Spirit knows it all, and we need to dive deep. And that's what we're going to do today on today's broadcast. We're going to discuss some taboo topics, some things you don't usually hear about in the pulpit. And I'm here with my good friend, Apostle Nigel Lewis from Trinidad and Shiloh Family Church. We're going to get into this message in just a moment. All right. I want you to really, really appreciate this man of God. He's a dear friend. He's a mighty powerhouse in the Lord. Apostle Nigel Lewis, thank you for joining me on today. Thank you very much, Apostle Jennifer. Thank you guys for joining us. It's a privilege to be here and I'm excited about this broadcast today. I'm excited too because people just don't talk about this stuff or we find, you know, a lot of people giving unbiblical answers. Some preachers want to give worldly advice instead of spiritual advice. And, you know, Jesus, he has something to say about all of these things. That these issues, we find them in the Bible. We really do. So let's let's talk about sex. This is we're gonna lose half the audience right here, but we're gonna up another half because some people are offended by the by the talk of they're just offended. They're un, they're uncomfortable. They don't think Christians should discuss such things. So sex. First of all, why is it a taboo topic and what do we need Christians to know about sex that they're not learning in church? I think honestly, the reason why why sex is such a taboo subject, a topic, is that it's so much out there. It's on the internet, it's on television, and we are bombarded with it really. And it's a hindrance. But what I have found after doing deliverance ministry for 16 years, that it's actually an area that the enemy uses. Satan loves darkness. And once there's an area of darkness, the enemy uses it. The Bible I've found is not afraid to talk about sex. I mean, early in the Bible, we have Lot and his two daughters and the Bible introduces incest. When I preach on, on Lot and his daughters, I always say, if I was writing the Bible, I would leave that part out. <laughs> I would be like, no, let's not talk about incest. I would be like, no, let's, but the, the Bible includes it. God allowed it. So we realize God is not afraid to talk about sex. He created it. He did create it and he created it for a purpose. You know, I was just reminded as you were speaking, Apostle Nigel, that I was in Houston. Uh, I know that you have a great work that you've planted in Houston. And boy, they got some they got some funky devils there in Houston. But I was in Houston and I was ministering at this conference. They wanted me to teach on deliverance. And I had a word of knowledge about someone in the audience who was struggling with pornography. And the word of knowledge was, if you don't come up and repent right now, this is going to destroy your marriage. And nobody moved. I mean, it was literally 15 minutes, nobody moved. And I finally, I said, I'm gonna sit here and wait because this is so serious. The enemy is not just gonna destroy your marriage, it's gonna destroy your health. The Lord is showing me that this is a, this is a vehicle, this is an inroad. And, and, and then I, I closed my eyes and I walked away. I said, Lord, Lord, you better, Lord, convict them or if i'm wrong they, you know this is getting uncomfortable and i opened my eyes and i turned back around and there was five people at the altar but there was one man in particular and he was just shaking and fluttering and he got radically free see that wasn't comfortable that wasn't something that i wanted to have to do 
but we have to be able to talk about these things in the church because people are coming out of the world and they don't always know better. They haven't been necessarily taught, you know, things happen to them. The incest issue, kids come in, they don't, they don't realize that they've, uh, you know, and if they don't feel comfortable, like they can share without being shamed, um, then how are they going to get free? Exactly. Um, we had a ministry. Now, one of the things I want to say, especially to our, our viewers, a lot of ministries that do not do deliverance, they don't encounter these sorts of things. I tell people all the time that most people do not see internal organs. This is how I explain it. But doctors who do surgery, they see internal organs. Deliverance ministries, um, prophets who do deliverance, apostles that do deliverance, they get to see the organs, so to speak. So one time, you know, we were in a service and I was moving real deep with, with real issues. And I asked for those who were molested by their father. There was a hush that came over the service because people were like, who's going to be brave enough? And four people came forward. I mean, they wept. They got um, tremendous deliverance, but this is an area. I, I want to say one time, Apostle, I was ministering and the Lord gave me a, a word of knowledge of incest that was taking place. It was very hard for me because to release that in that type of environment. And two girls came forward and the entire church got shook and they fell to the ground. And I found out after, I never got invited back. I found out afterwards yeah. they were the assistant pastor's daughters wow so wow. god was incest that was happening right in that church and the point is it is such a taboo topic they didn't want to speak to me afterwards they didn't want to talk to me afterwards i cannot say what happened to that pastor and to his two daughters but it was actually happening in the church wow 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 well it, it is happening in the church i had I don't know, must have been a few months ago now. And I was ministering and there was such a negative atmosphere. It was like, like, like I was being mocked by a spirit during the, the message. And I said, you know what? I'm going to stop here. I said, somebody is, is not believing a word I say. Somebody is mocking me on the inside and somebody is, in, is fornicating. And I just started like word of knowledge, word of knowledge, word of knowledge. And this woman came up and she said, I didn't believe a word you were saying. I don't believe in speaking in tongues. I don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. And I'm also fornicating. I'm like, it was all, it was all coming from one person. But see, so how do we do a better job, you know, as, as leaders, as pastors, how can the church do a better job in, you know, speaking, teaching about these issues in a biblical and a balanced way? Because these really are taboo topics. Sex is a taboo topic. I mean, I've never done a series on sex. I've, I've thought about it, but even I, you know, I'm like, uh, you know, that that's, 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 I want to do one on pornography is what I want to do. But I'm like, uh, I'm waiting for the right time because P it's not because I'm afraid to share it, but, and I'm being very transparent here and I'm sure many pastors can relate. It's because the people are probably going to have a meltdown. They're going to freak out. They're going to be embarrassed. They're going to be ashamed. They're going to be offended. They're going to be convicted. Um, and, and you're trying to, to love them, but sometimes I think maybe we need to get over, you know, how we think they're going to take it and just go ahead and give them the, the, the medicine and go ahead and get them free. I think one of the best ways to handle it is that the, the, our audience needs to be prepped. You know, if we would just come out and, okay, today's live, let's talk about sex. People will be like, what? <laughs> you know, they, they're going to have all sorts of misconceptions. So they have to be prepped. Right. So when I am doing topics like that, I let them know one, it has to be prepped. Um, I say some things like, you know, when you're watching a, a, a television show or, or a movie, they say it's rated R or it's rated PG 13. And I tell them our oh, topic is rated M, it's rated for the mature. So we have to prep them. Right. That's one. Two, I think proper biblical knowledge is important one of the things i admire about the apostle paul is that in his in his he's a, he's a wonderful writer in his book in corinthians he dived into topics that the corinthians wrote to him about and the apostle paul said something like this he said this is not of the commandment of the lord 
This is from me. And then he said, but I have the Lord's spirit. And I've read that scripture for many years. And I realized that what the apostle Paul was saying is that because he's empowered by the spirit of the Lord, he has the wisdom to deal with these topics. And he was saying, it's not, it's not a commandment from God, but I have the wisdom. I'm imbued with wisdom to speak. And I think what we need to do is ask for godly wisdom from the Holy Spirit to be able to speak on some of these topics like adultery, infidelity, incest. And here's a big one that some people, they don't, they, they like to shy away from. Actual sex in marriage. A lot of people have issues in actual sex in marriage. Now, we're not just talking about, well, fornicating or adultery. No, we are talking about married people. How far should we go? Or what can we do? Or what is safe? What is not safe? These are actual issues that married people ask from time to time. Right. And it's not like there is a, <laughs> it's not like there's chapter and verse on some of these issues. So you really do have to have the mind of Christ, the spirit of the Lord in leading with some of these issues. And, you know, it's, um, I know the issues you're, you're talking about and it's people are embarrassed to ask, but you know what? I would say this, you know what, if you're a married couple, and you're having issues in that realm. You know, scripture says, you know, the, the marriage bed is undefiled, right? So if you're having issues in this area, then you should go to your pastor because you don't want to open the door for enemy condemnation. You don't want to op the, open the door for enemy temptation because this partner thinks that it's, you know, the, the husband thinks this and the wife thinks that and they're not in agreement. So then the husband goes somewhere else and looks for what he wants when the wife should. I mean, I mean you know, come on. Scripture says our bodies are not once you get married, your body is not your own. But then there's a biblical way we're not getting into you know, a very strange, you know, I'm not even going to say the things, but you know, what I'm talking about that. This is why it's taboo because even I don't want these things, um, you know, but, but there are issues. I mean, do people come to you and ask you from your church? Do they, do they ask you these questions? This is, is, is what I want to say. Mo a lot of, again, because we are deliverance ministers, a deliverance minister, um, and I don't really call myself a deliverance minister. I call myself an apostle that does deliverance. But, you know, people will say, you're a deliverance minister. We are exposed to different things. So what happens is that many couples, Apostle Jennifer, come from so many different churches. Why? Because they cannot ask their pastor. If some pastors, the I don't even want to use the word the average pastor, but for want of a better word, if there a couple comes and then imagine the couple is and is the type of couples that comes us. Sometimes they're leaders, sometimes they're worshippers, sometimes they're prophets. And when they speak to their pastor, some pastors they say you are lustful, or something like that, and they bring condemnation. So then they come to me, and my wife and I we have discussed this for so many years, and I told her I said we can't be it, of course, but. There is need, and I want to say this publicly, maybe someone out there is watching and the Lord has dropped that in their spirit, and maybe this is a go-ahead for you. I have told my wife many times, there is a need for, a, I believe it, Christian sex therapist. Because, let's, because watch me. Again, some of the things I cannot say we are interviewing, but many Christian couples are struggling in that arena. And what I have found, Apostle, Apostle Leclerc, is that because they are struggling in that arena, in comes the demon of perversion. And then they have another struggle now. The, the man is struggling with perversion. The wife is struggling with perversion. And that can be solved if someone was able to get past the barrier of the taboo topic and say, Let's discuss what's going on in your bedroom. That is so good. And let's let's give a practical example here before we move on from this topic. And people probably want to hear a lot more about this. So let's just stay here for a minute. But, you know, let's say that the wife was sexually abused or raped or, God forbid, or uh, uh, molested as a child or had some sort of sexual encounter that has made her reticent or doesn't want to have sex with her husband. She just, she feels dirty or afraid, or she's been traumatized with a, a sexual encounter that not by her own fault. Like, like, you know, I'm not talking about a woman who went out and slept around and she was with her. No, I mean, something happened to the woman and she just, 
they would call, I guess, in medical terms, they'd say she's frigid. She doesn't want the husband to touch her. So then what happens? Well, the husband then, because he has a natural sex drive, men are created with a strong sex drive and very visual creatures. What do they do? Well, they're looking for some relief. So what's the first thing they're going to do? Well, they may turn to pornography, right? They turn to pornography and now they get what? Addicted to pornography. And the woman finds out and she's insulted and he's offended that she's insulted because he has needs and now he's got demons and he's got an addiction. And and it, it becomes a real mess. Whereas if there was a, uh, and, and there probably are Christian sex therapists, if there were a pastor with the mind of Christ who could sit down and see, you know, no condemnation. The wife needs deliverance. The wife needs inner healing. The husband needs deliverance. The husband needs to be patient with his wife. The husband needs to understand what she's been through and, you know, work together uh, to overcome it. So those are some things that that I've seen practically speaking. And because nobody wants to talk about it, what happens? The marriage often ends in divorce. And then the children are hurt. The people are miserable. The woman remains frigid in bondage. The man remains addicted to pornography. I mean, as you can see, this is a hot mess. It's because people don't want to talk about it. I'm not even talking about necessarily talking about it from the pulpit. That's one way to address broader issues. I'm talking about, and you're talking about as well, the, the other side of it is, who can we trust to go to when there's trouble in our marriage or when, you know, God forbid we slipped up and had a, uh, and, and fornicated and now we're condemned and we don't want to come to church anymore. And it's because we need to confess that sin, but who do we confess it to without being condemned? That is an excellent um, example, <laughs> Apostle. We had a situation where similar circumstance, but well, let me, let me explain. So this sister, her first three sexual encounters at an early age, I'm talking about teenagers, were all, you know, violent rapes, like all her earliest encounters. So got saved, married, husband got saved. And one day he approached me and he said that in the, because of, I see a lot of pastors, they don't understand this. So because of her, her first sexual encounters, three of them were violent, she expected violence in the bedroom. I'm talking about safe people. I'm talking about tongue-talking people. Wow. And what would happen is that in the bedroom, she would tell him to, to kick her, hit her, abuse her. And he was like, I can't. And she would hit him. I mean, this is real. And she heard me speaking from the pulpit about, you know, deliverance needed even in, in, in marriage. And we, we, we had this session, we did, I mean, those demons did not want to leave. Demons of rape, demons of anger, demons of violence. But we come after 45 minutes, she was finally set free and her, that, that whole area was restored. So sometimes there are problems that go beyond just sim simply saying, and some pastors, they think this alone will fix it. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, submit to your husband. There are some intricate problems that people have even as you said the frigidity that is a real issue a real issue in many marriages and they sit there in church husband wife the husband is going through a lot of um turmoil because again as you said it rightly he's hooked he's he he needs an outlet and the wife is like you know i don't know why i'm like this so these are some taboo areas some taboo topics that definitely need to be discussed so then what advice would you give to the Christian who's listening now and, you know, they, they're having, you know, issues with perversion or, you know, they're having, they're in a marriage where they're, 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 and they love their spouse, but they're struggling and it's bringing strife. How can they find, I mean, they can't all go to you. They can't, they can't all come to me. How do they, how do they, if there's nobody to help them, nobody to deliver them, nobody to counsel them. I mean, I suppose they have to keep searching, but I mean, some people literally are in places where they can't find help. What do they do? This is an excellent question, um, Apostle. I even pray about this question. I ask the Lord to, to raise up more ministers, more apostles, more prophets like yourself who understand the need for inner healing and deliverance. My advice would be one, try and open up to their pastor 
and see the response from their pastor. And if their pastor is not into it or he doesn't feel up to the challenge. And again, some pastors simply don't feel, and this is the word I'm going to use, equipped to deal with these things. Like, well, I don't know how to help the situation. I don't know how to, you know, because they, are, they don't know to do inner healing. They, they're not, they're not um, trained in, in deliverance. So I would say one to the pastors that are out there, stop, I'm pleading, stop, um, um, you know, attacking deliverance, stop attacking inner healing. Yes, there are people that are doing wild and crazy things. I, I would be the first to admit that. There are people that are doing crazy things in the area of deliverance. It's just like the prophetic. There are people doing wild and crazy things in the prophetic, but we have all come to accept um, the prophetic. So I'm saying, accept that people need inner healing accept that people need deliverance and if people come to you find out about how can i bring inner healing to these people how can i bring deliverance or we can be mature enough and i've done this um apostle when people come to me and i realize that my expertise can't help them in a, a marital area i actually send them to a counselor someone that is able but i think some pastors they're insecure to do these things but get someone who you can trust Get someone like like Abraham's servant who he trusted to go and get a bride for his daughter who wouldn't touch the daughter. We all need we all need someone like that. Someone who can do the, do what needs to be done and then send them back to us. So I would say find someone, find your pastor, find a, a, a minister of deliverance, someone who does inner healing, someone that is trustworthy, that you and your spouse can sit with them and discuss. These are the struggles that we're having um, in our marriage, in our bedroom, in our relationship. That is excellent. You see the race as you come up in church when it's election time. 